Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I am Dr. Gopal Sharan Parashari. Uh, I am an assistant professor of economics in the Indian Institute of Technology, Dharwa, Karnataka in India. So I welcome you to this course uh, named Evolutionary Game Theory and Applications. So this is introductory lecture, first lecture. Here we will start with little introduction of game theory. So today I will uh, <coughs> describe what we call a game is and then I will tell some solution concepts that we prominently use in game theory. And once we do this uh, little revision of game theory, then we will uh, proceed with our journey of evolutionary game theory and its some of its applications. So let us start with something called rational decision making. So all of us uh, in our day to day life, we come, come across such situations when we decide about something. Okay? So, when we go for breakfast in the morning, then we think what we should eat. So, so in day to day life, we come across such situations when we need to decide something. Okay? So, uh, be it like suppose we want to travel from Delhi to Mumbai, then we have couple of op options. A person may think that whether he wants to go by a flight or it wants to take a train or it wants to drive. Similarly, if we go about, we talk about some firm, then firm may decide whether to hire somebody or not, it may decide whether to undertake some R&D project or not. Okay. Similarly, suppose if you are a student, then you may decide whether to take some course, enroll to it or not enroll to it. Such kind of uh, situations are plenty of them are there in our life when we decide something. So basically, these are single person decision problems. Basically, so I decide depending upon my preferences or likings and how I want to choose something. Okay? So, while deciding if we just want to uh, give a little technically if we want to see how a person decides at such instances when we want to choose something. So, there suppose we want to frame this uh, decision making problem, then we can come up this kind of idea that there are three features. So, basically there are a list of actions, okay? then there are outcomes associated with the choice of these actions and then preferences that means how player is ranking all the set of possible outcomes from most desired to least desired. This is how we can technically frame this decision making problem of a single person that a rational person is making this decision. Okay? So, we can think of actions, suppose we talk about action in this uh, say, suppose we want to go from Delhi to Mumbai, suppose a person he wants to go to from Delhi, he wants to go to Mumbai. Okay. So, his set of actions we may say he may take train or he may take flight. Okay. Then outcome, outcome may be in terms of time, how much time uh, this journey is taking, then it can be in terms of cost, etcetera. And de depending upon this time and the preferences of the person, this person will choose from this these options. So, for the person depending upon preferences, he may rank uh, anything he may rank, he may prefer train journey to flight or otherwise, he may also prefer flight over train. Okay. So, I am just giving an idea that how we can model this simple day to day decision making problem, which I am calling here a single person decision making problem. Okay? But in game theory, we do little bit more than this. Okay? We model something called strategic interaction. Okay? That I will explain that what do I mean when I am talking about strategic interaction. So, this is not basically a single person's decision making problem. Okay, it is something else. So, basically to develop the idea of this strategic interaction, let us take this example. 
when I am considering one uh, some university student okay, and this student wants to opt some course. Okay. As uh, you must be familiar with this setting that uh, in university we have to take certain courses to get some degree. Okay. So, each semester or each year we want to enroll some courses and while enrolling these courses we have some idea like we have some uh, you know decision making uh, variables like on which our decision is based upon. Okay. So, basically if we think about this student who wants to opt for some course. So, the idea is objective is uh, the take away from this course is a combination of learning and grade. Okay. So, basically whenever a student takes some course or wants to enroll some course, his objective is to get some knowledge about that subject and also to have a grade, good grade and all of us know that higher grade is normally preferred over lower grade. So, this is how st students preferences are dependent on these uh, over these uh, courses. Okay. So, basically we can say that a possible com all possible combinations of learning and grade are the outcome of this decision making problem. Okay. So, now basically while deciding to take this course what a person's set of action is, what are the actions that are available to this person, he will think in terms of how hard it is required to study for this course okay, and how many lectures are to be attended and overall how much time that person needs to devote to prepare for the exam in this course. Depending all these things, uh, this person will decide whether to take this course or not. Okay. And obviously, more efforts this person puts, higher is the grade, this is the normal scenario. So, this is how somehow we are trying to you know model this situation of uh, this uh, student university students problem of opting a course or not. Okay. Fine. <coughs> Now, if you move further, then you may also think of some randomness. This is not that straightforward that you always, you know, uh, put in hard work and then you get higher grades and good learning. There are some random elements also. For example, exams difficulty level may be variable. Okay. Sometime exam paper is easier. Sometime exam paper is difficult. Okay. And this may also depend upon the mood of the professor while setting the exam examination paper. Also. Uh, how you perform in the course in the exam that will also depend on your mood that day. Okay. So, we are we, we can also you know talk about some randomness related to these factors, but if you think about it more then this problem is not still that simple. Okay. There is something that we are missing. What we are missing is basically just like this student that we are talking about he is thinking about whether to take this course or not in terms of all these parameters. Uh, in order to get a desired grade and some learning okay, based on the basis of how much efforts he needs to put in. Okay. There is something else, what is that? So, just like this student others are also thinking on the same line and they are also planning to take this course okay. and given that there is a relative grading, what will happen? So, this person's grade will also depend how other persons are, other students who are taking that course they are behaving. Okay. Suppose, this person decides to take this course uh, given his preference, then at the same time other people are deciding to take that course and they are also calculating similarly that how much I need to prepare for this exam, how many classes I need to attend, how much time I need to devote. Okay. So, basically all these students <coughs> they are optimizing their decisions. Okay. So, this is not the just only one person who is deciding all other uh, students are also thinking in the same manner. Okay. So, basically each student here we are calling player in game theory we call these, uh, this, uh, these students we may call player. Okay. They are trying to guess what others are doing okay, and how to react to that. Okay. So, this kind of situation is called a strategic interaction. Okay. So, th one student is thinking like whether to take this course or not, then he will think that how much I need to put in efforts and then he will think who else is taking this course. Suppose all the very brilliant students of the class is taking this course, then he needs to put in more efforts. So, he may think that it is possible then I, I may take some other course and that will give me give me similar grade with less efforts, things like that. This is just I am telling one example. Okay. So, the idea is his actions and in his payoff or his take away from this course will depend not only on his own 
efforts or own thinking but it will also depend upon the other students choice other students actions so this kind of situation is called strategic interaction okay <coughs> so basically the framework that we make uh, that we discussed in the beginning of this lecture that we came up with a decision making framework for a single person we need to modify this a bit to cater to these situations called strategic interactions okay so by the game b means the similar strategic situations okay where i will again write this that when a persons i am writing payoff so if you don't understand payoff you can consider it as benefit or satisfaction level okay so if when a person's payoff depends not only on his own actions but also on the actions of others so this kind of situation is called strategic interaction so we will discuss quite many examples so that you can understand what strategic interaction is and this strategic interaction is called a game in game theory okay this is how we define a game so game is nothing but A strategic interaction we model as a game, and a strategic interaction is what? When a person's payoff or uh, benefit or satisfaction level that depends not only on his own efforts or actions, but also the efforts or actions of the other players or persons, then we call this kind of situation as strategic interaction. Fine. So basically, we will start with something called static games of complete information. Okay. <clears throat> so. basically what we need to uh, define these kind of games so basically the idea is we have a set of players okay this is how we define this static game of complete information by static means there is no dynamic any element involved here what does it mean that the players who are involved in this situation of game or the strategic situation they are independently choosing one cent for all actions okay and this their choice of actions of all the players that is giving rise to some outcome okay so here this independently choose one cent all actions this gives the idea of static games okay so basically what happens each player simultaneously and independently chooses an action then conditional on the player's choices okay we get an outcome and depending upon that outcome and players preferences this payoff is distributed to each player so idea will be more clear when we discuss here i talk that static game of complete information so we will little bit focus upon what this uh, complete information is so basically the idea of complete information is that all players understand the environment they are in that is the game that they are playing in every way so the idea is all the aspects of game that these persons understand okay so this is complete information so game of complete information requires that the following four components of this game be the common knowledge among all the players who are playing this game or who are involved in this game what are these four components so basically all the possible actions that are available with the players okay all the pos possible outcomes depending upon these action choices that players make okay and then they also understand that how each combination of actions of all players affects which outcome will materialize okay and then they also understand that preferences of each and every player over the outcomes how that that player himself and others other opponent players or other players 
they prefer different outcomes. Okay. So, all these four things they should be known to all the players and not only known there is a technical word here that is called common knowledge. So, all these knowledge about all these components should be a common knowledge. What common knowledge is we will see here. So, basically <coughs> an event E this is how we define common knowledge an event E is common knowledge if everyone here in this case everyone who is playing this game. So, everyone knows E okay, and then everyone knows that everyone knows E and so on ad infinitum. Okay. So, this is how we define common knowledge again I am repeating that everyone knows E and also everyone knows that everyone knows E and everyone knows and everyone knows that everyone knows E and so on. So, this is how we define common knowledge. Okay. So, now having done this now we can define this this game as something called normal form. Okay. So, basically to define this game we need three features okay. a set of players as we discussed in the uh, beginning itself with respect to the single person decision problem. So, a set of set of players set of actions okay, for each player then a set of payoff function for each player that give a payoff value to each combination of the players chosen actions. Okay. And in game theory as I told you this is strategic interaction and strategy uh, an integral part of game theory. So, a strategy is nothing but a plan of action intended to accomplish a specific goal. This is a general meaning of a strategy is in this course what we will do we will interchangeably use action and strategy. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, again I am repeating. So, a set of players set of actions of all players and a set of payoff functions or preferences for all the players over the outcomes. So, this is how we define a normal form game. If we talk about the single person decision making problem that we defined initially there we did not define this a set of players because that was single person decision making problem. Okay. So, basically what we will do we will simply start with this two player finite games okay and what we do in this finite game we represent this game some by some something called matrix representation we uh, model these uh, or represent these games or these situations as a game matrix okay <coughs> so basically a finite game is a game with a finite number of players in which number of strategies or action si these are finite this is finite for all players. So, basically number of players is finite and the actions or strategies available or uh, for the all players is also finite then we call a game as a finite game. Okay. Then in matrix there are rows and there are columns. Okay. So, each row represents one of players one's strategies. So, by convention we represent player one's strategies as rows. Okay. So, if there are k strategies in the strategy set of player 1, then the matrix will have k rows. Okay. So, basically rows represent <laughs> player 1's strategies or actions as I told you we will use strategy and action interchangeably. Okay. Similarly, column. So, each column will represent player 2's strategy, strategies of the player 2. Okay. So, if player 2 has m available strategies or uh, actions, then this matrix have m columns. Okay. Then what do we write in matrix? So, in matrix in each cell we write <coughs> a two element vector or ordered pair v 1 v 2 where v 1 is payoff of player 1 and v 2 is payoff of player 2. So, this is how we define it. So, again I am telling rho represents the actions of player 1 or strategies of player 1, column represents actions or strategies of player 2. Then in each cell of the matrix we write an ordered pair or two element vector v 1 comma v 2, where v 1 represents payoff of player 1 and v 2 represents payoff of player 2. So, this is how we represent a game a finite game with the help of a matrix we are talking about here two player matrix game only. Okay. 
Okay, so to get ideas more clear, what we will do, we will take up this example called prisoner's dilemma. This is a situation, there is a story about it. So, with the help of first we will go through the story and then with the help of story, we will formulate our game and game table or game matrix. Okay? So, a story goes like this, this is a very famous uh, elementary game and it is used at many places. We will also involve this uh, basic game in our uh, analysis in evolutionary game theory when we will do uh, uh, you know some applications of evolutionary game theory like cooperation and all. Okay, so, the story goes like this that there are two suspects in a major crime okay, and they are caught by the police and they have locked up them in separate cells. Okay. So, again let me tell you there are two suspects in major crime okay, and they have been caught up for some minor crime and they are locked up in separate cells. So, there is enough evidence to convict each of them for a minor offense for that they have uh, you know caught up okay minor uh, uh, offense like uh, some theft or something but the police or the investigating agency they do not have enough evidence to convict convict either of them for the major crime okay so they are caught up for some uh, smaller petty crime but they are suspect of, uh, suspected to be part of some major crime but police or investigating agency do not does not have uh, any enough evidence to convict them for this major crime. The only way is that one of them, if one of them acts as an informer to the police against the other, then they can implicate that other person. Okay? Now, suppose none of them becomes an informer and stays quiet, then what will happen? This each will be convicted of the minor offense only. Okay? because the police does not have enough evidence and they will end up spending only one year in prison. Okay? So, this is a made up story, this is just to explain this kind of situation. Okay? Now, if one and only one of them you know defects, here we are defect is something, he, this thing that suppose one person becomes informer against the other, then we are terming in the uh, terminology of this game as defect. Okay, and when both of them are not, not turning against each other and both of them are quiet, then we call this kind of thing cooperate. Okay. So, cooperate is nobody becomes an informer to the police against each other, okay. then it means that they are cooperating to each other. Okay. If one person becomes informer against the other, then it is called defect. Okay. So, this is how we define it here in this game. So, if one, or one and only one person of them defects, that means becomes informer against the other, then he or she will be freed and used as a witness against the other. Okay? So, the, if only one person becomes informer, then the informer will be free and the other person against whom this person has become informer, he, he will spend four years in prison. Okay? And suppose if they both defect, against each other, then each will spend more years in prison. So, this is how the story goes. Okay? So, suppose now think about it, then we can think that <coughs> we want to come up with the uh, normal form game out of this, a strategic form of game out of this story. Okay? So, if we talk about what is a set of players, so basically set of players is player 1 or player 2 or we can say prisoner 1 or prisoner 2. Prisoner 1 or prisoner 2. So, there are two prisoners who are the players. Okay? So, in, lec in this lecture, we will stick to this player 1 and player 2. You can call anything, you can call prisoner 1 and prisoner 2 also. Okay? Now, <coughs> given this set of players, so what are now different actions available for these players, prisoner 1, player 2 or player 1 and player 2. So, both of them have got two options, either they can defect that means, one can become informer against the other, this is called defect or they may cooperate. That means, they do not become, that person does not become the uh, informer against the other and uh, does, not, uh, does not defect. So, this is called cooperate. Okay? Similarly, player 2 also, player 2 also can defect, that means, can become an informer against player 1 and also 
other option is cooperate that means he does not become an informer against player 1 so this is how this is the set of actions i am again repeating it so what is set of uh, players so player 1 and player 2 is set of players so there are two players okay you may also call them prisoner 1 and prisoner 2 what are the set of action available to them so for player 1 there are two options either player 1 can defect that means can become an informer against player 2 or cooperate that means he does not become an informer against player 1 sorry player 2 okay similarly player 2 it is also he has also got two available actions one is defect that he becomes an informer against player 1 or does not become an informer against player 1 that we call we are calling cooperate okay then <coughs> Uh, having known this players and actions then we can talk about this set of payoff function okay so payoff is nothing but the utility or the satisfaction label that each player gets so that will depend upon number of years number of years of sentence that these players or persons or prisoners are getting okay so depending upon uh, the numbers of years of sentence they are getting they will decide or they will rank these outcomes that will decide the payoff function and preferences of these players. So, clearly less years of uh, sentence is preferable to more years of sentence. Okay. So, on the basis of that what we can do I will come to this game matrix. So, we may decide like this. So, basically if we understand this uh, story then you can think of that a person will like that suppose if we talk about in terms of player 1's preferences. So, player 1 would like that he defect okay and the other person cooperates okay this will be his most desirable outcome okay come the second thing what he would like will be that both of them cooperate he also cooperates player 1 cooperates and player 2 also cooperates after this comes he defects and the player 2 also defect okay what is least desirable for player 1 is that he cooperates and player 2 defects Okay. So, given this we can decide like this that there are four outcomes. So, depending upon this as we discussed what are the available actions. So, basically there are two players player 1 and player 2 each player has two actions available to him. So, number of outcomes will be what 4 outcomes. So, 2 cross 2 total 4 outcomes. So, what will be 4 outcomes? defect defect cooperate cooperate defect cooperate and cooperate defect Okay. So, what is this? If I am writing defect defect, this means that player 1 defects that means becomes informer against player 2 and player 2 also defects becomes informer against player 1. Then we, we will call this outcome as defect defect. Okay. Now, <coughs> how about this cooperate cooperate? This is also similarly uh, player 1 cooperates that means does not become an informer against player 2 and similarly player 2 also does not becomes an informer against player 1 cooperate then it is cooperate cooperate. Okay. Third thing defect cooperate means first person defects means becomes cooperator against player 2 and co second person cooperates that means does not become an informer against player 1. Okay. I am again telling. So, defect means defect cooperate means defect means player 1 is defecting that means becoming an informer against player 2 and player 2 is using cooperate that means not becoming an informer against player 1. Then last is cooperate defect. So, that means player 1 is cooperating that means not becoming an informer against player 2, but player 2 is defecting choosing defect that means becoming an informer against player 1. So, this is how there are 4 outcomes defect defect cooperate cooperate defect cooperate 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 uh, defect. So, our next job is to get the preferences like how these players as are ranking these four outcomes. Okay. So, this is what I was telling that for player 1 he would be most like he will be liking this first this outcome most that is defect cooperate. 
that he becomes an informer against player 2 and player 2 cooperates. Okay. Then next best option for player 1 is cooperate, cooperate, third best is defect, defect and fourth or least desirable is cooperate, defect that he cooperates and player 2 defects, player 2 becomes informer against him and he does not become an informer against him. So, this is how we can define the preference order of player 1 and for that matter for player 2 also, this is how we can define this preference order over the 4 outcomes available in this game. I think it is clear to you that as each person or each player is given 2 available actions, so number of outcomes becomes 4, 2 into 2. Okay? Fine. So, having get this order, so this is most desirable number 1 choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice. Then what we do in economics basically, <coughs> we based upon the, this rank, we give one number okay? and this is called uh, be that, that number is called utility okay? and we often talked about and we call that utility as ordinal utility. Okay. Fine. So, we will give some number. So, this utility of player 1, the notation goes like this. So, B 1, B represents utility and this 1 of player 1. Okay. So, B 1 defect comma cooperate, that means utility of player 1 corresponding to an outcome where this player 1 defects or player 2 cooperates okay, will be more than utility of player 1 when he cooperates and other, per other person also cooperates. Why this is so? Because this is more desirable, this is less desirable compared to the first thing. So, the utility out of this outcome which is this will be more than the utility out of this outcome and so on for 4 outcomes. So, utility of this first choice will be highest, this will be second highest, this will be third highest and this will be least. Okay. So, we can give any number. For example, in my game matrix, I have given this highest number 8 to this first choice. So, the utility for this outcome B 1 of this thing is 8, second highest is 5, this is 3, this is 1. Okay. So, what do we mean by ordinal? So, the ordinal means that this is not the only number that we can assign to these outcomes. It can be anything as long as the order is preserved, the order of its preferences or order of the liking is preserved. So, if this is most desirable, it should get highest number, this is second last, so this is get second highest, sorry, this is second choice, second best, this should get second highest number, this is third best, so this should get third highest number and this should get least number. So, this order is preserved here, 8 is more than 5, 5 is more than 3, 3 is more than 1. We can also write like you know 4, 3, 2, 1, this is also same. We can also write 10, 5, 1, 0. So, as long as this order is preserved, we are done. So, this is why this is called ordinal utility. So, what I am doing, I am using this green colored number in my uh, for my lecture. Okay. So, basically the utility of player 1 out of the outcome this defect comma cooperate is 8. Okay. So, I have written this 8. Okay. When person 1 defects, person 2 cooperates, person 1 is getting 8. Similarly, when per person 1 cooperates and person 2 also cooperates, okay, then this person is getting 5. I am talking about player 1. So, with this, this is how I have drawn this game matrix, where as I told you that in the game matrix, the rows, these are the two rows, these are telling the actions of player 1. Okay. Similarly, the columns, these are two columns here, these are actions of player 2, these rows are actions of player 1. Okay. So, as I told you in the beginning itself that this is how we represent the uh, game in form of the matrix, where rows represent as a convention only the actions of player 1 and columns as actions of player 2. Then 
I also told that in each cell we write an order pair or two vector number v1 comma v2 where first number is payoff of player 1 and second number is payoff of player 2 ok. So, same thing. So, see when this person defects player 1 defects and player 2 cooperate cooperates then we have decided this number is 8. So, this is getting 8. Similarly, second thing cooperate cooperate when player 1 cooperates player 2 also cooperates then player 1 gets 5 ok. Third is defect comma defect this. So, player 1 defects and player 2 defects when both of both of them are defecting then player 1 is getting 3 ok. So, this defect comma defect player 1 is getting 3 this is how we write and last when player 1 cooperates this thing and player 2 defects ok here then player 1 is getting 1 you see this number 1. So, this is how we have filled the entries of this all the cells in this game matrix ok. Similarly, we can do for player 2. So, finally, we get this kind of game matrix ok. So, again I am telling. So, suppose defect defect is the outcome then player 1 getting 3 player 2 is also getting 3 with the same logic ok. If the outcome is defect comma cooperate then player 1 gets 8 player 2 gets 1 ok. If cooperate defect is outcome that player 1 is cooperating player 2 is defecting then player 1's payoff is 1 player 2's payoff is 8 ok. So, this is linked with the story. So, we decide this what will be the preferences with the help of the story, but once we formulate this kind of game matrix then we do not need to go again to the story story is done ok. Now, we will analyze everything with the help of this, this game table. So, I hope this is clear to you now we will proceed for further things ok. So, we will see one more example to get the ideas to get the ideas more clear ok. So, basically <coughs> this now we do the second example is some R and D competition between two firms A and B ok. So, for example, there are two firms they may be some pharmaceutical firms they are trying to come up with some new drug. So, for that they needs to invest in R and D ok. So, we can define like this for defining a game we need a set of players. So, here what is the set of players? So, our players are two firms firm A firm B ok. What are their available actions? So, they may invest in uh, for R and D or they may not may not invest in R and D ok. So, investing and not investing or invest not invest are the available actions for both the firms for firm 1 also firm A also and firm B also each of them have got uh, each of these two firms have got invest and not invest as their possible uh, as available actions ok. Now, based on these available actions as I already told there are four possible outcomes with the two actions available to each player just like in previous case in prisoners dilemma. So, here possible outcomes are A invests firm A invest firm B does not invest firm A invests firm B also invest this is second outcome. Similarly, A not investing B not investing is third outcome and similarly A not investing and B investing is fourth outcome. So, in all we have four outcomes ok. So, now we have to see what should be the preference order for each firm to rank all these four outcomes what should be the most likely and what should be the least likely outcome of uh, out of all these four outcomes ok. So, basically this game is basically why it is important how they will decide they will decide because suppose they are uh, developing some new technology. So, they will get lot of revenue out of that and lot of lot of profit out of that. So, depending upon that they will decide and they will rank these outcomes ok. So, this is a game to develop some new technology for example or some new drug by the pharmaceutical companies ok. So, basically we can think of that for each player this will be the idea. So, each company each firm will like that it is investing and the opponent is not investing this is the most desirable outcome how. So, the company the firm who is investing he will get some good R and D product and they that they can market to get lot of revenue out of it and the opponent is not investing. So, there is no revenue sharing or anything ok. So, this is how this outcome that I invest you do not invest is the best desirable most desirable outcome ok. Next is 
I am not investing anything and you are not investing anything. This is the second most desirable. Then third most desirable is I am investing and you are investing. Both are investing. And least desirable option is I do not invest in R and D, but my opponent is doing uh, an investment in R and D. So, this is how we can define. So, this is most desirable, first outcome, first desirable, second desirable, third desirable, fourth desirable. And as we did earlier, we can give highest number to first desirable. So, I have given 4 here. Less than that, I can give to this second desirable 3, third desirable 2, fourth desirable 1. As I already told that this is ordinal utility, so I can give some other number also. For example, I can give 1000 to this, 75 to this, 50 to this, 50 to this and 25 to this, this okay? or anything else, but we will stick to this 4, 3, 2, 1 for the purpose of our analysis of this game. Okay? So, we can represent this game as a game matrix. Okay. So, there are two players firm A and firm B. Okay. Rows are representing the actions of firm A or player 1. What are those actions? Invest, not invest. Similarly, columns, columns are representing the actions of firm B, invest and not invest. Okay. So, we can see if the outcome is invest and invest and let us check over this list preference order of these outcomes. So, when both are investing then it is who is investing getting 2. So, as both are investing then they both of them are getting 2 comma 2. Okay. Now, suppose this we see. So, firm A is investing firm B is not investing. So, firm B is invest A is investing firm B is not investing then firm A gets 4 the one who invests get 4 okay. and one who does not invest gets 1. So, it is firm 2 is getting 1. The exactly opposite thing is this firm 1 is not investing. So, it is getting 1 and firm 2 is investing that is why he is getting 4. And the last matrix is this 3 comma 3 which is what not invest not invest. So, none of them is investing then both of them are getting 3. So, 3 comma 3. So, this is how we draw or we uh, model this game or the situation as this game table okay game matrix okay we will take up one more example this is called game of chicken where <coughs> we can model the situation like suppose two countries they are interacting with each other okay so interaction is little competitive so this is just for uh, example uh, kind of thing just to explain a situation this has nothing to do with the reality okay so basically we can say there are two uh, countries say us and china just for the sake of example only okay so let's assume that us and china they are competing to see uh, who will stand firm for the longer time longer period okay so if one compromises then other will consider this as a victory okay and if both of them stand firm then there is a co conflict okay simple similar game is also is hawk and dove game that we will do in the later part of this uh, course when we will do evolutionary game theory after this introductory lectures on uh, game theory. So, hawk dove game is also of similar kind. Okay. So, this kind of situation we model uh, through game theory in case of international relations. So, similar thing is here. So, basically there are two countries say US and China. So, if one of them compromises or backs down then the other person other country wins. If both stay, stand firm then there is a situation of conflict. Okay? So, this in this kind of situation we may think of players as US and China. So, this is your set of players US comma China and each country has got two actions available. So, this is set of actions. So, one option is to stand firm other one is to back down. Okay? So, this is how we can define two actions. Now, we can come up with the game matrix after we do this uh, preference ordering. Okay? So, basically just like the previous game. So, a country would like the situation or the outcome when I stand firm that means, this country stands firm and the opponent backs down this is the most desirable outcome. So, we will give highest number to this highest utility to this. Second best outcome is I back down 
and the opponent also backs down. Okay, so this will get second highest number. Okay, third is I stand firm, and the opponent also stands firm. So this gets third highest number, and least desirable outcome is I back down, but my opponent stands firm. So this is get least number that is one. With the help of this preference ordering, okay, we can come up with this kind of game matrix. So again, no need to tell that this rows are strategies or actions of US, who is the row player, and columns are strategies of China, who is column player. And with the help of these numbers, we can fill the entries in each cell of this game matrix. Okay, so this is how we model. these kind of situations okay so the examples till now what we gave whether it is game of chicken as we are discussing this or the condition that we discussed in the previous uh, example that there was a competition between two firms firm a and b to develop some new technology or new drug and for that they were contemplating to uh, invest in r and d or not all these kind of they are just name is different but the structure of the game is just like prisoner's dilemma okay now having done this example of prisoner's dilemma we will do some different kind of games who are not kind of prisoner's dilemma okay so this this is another one famous game which is called battle of sexes here what happens <coughs> when couple is their husband and wife they wish to go for outing okay so what what happens one of them we can say just for sake of uh, uh, explaining this we can say that one person say husband prefers football match watching football match as an outing while the other person say wife she prefers movie okay just to explain this it may be other way around also okay <clears throat> and also so this is how we are not if they are not together each of them is equally unhappy so there are two things two likings we can see here one is that husband and wife likes movie more but at the same time they also like together then they are not happy they are equally unhappy so we can we can model the situation as a game matrix so there are two players i am not writing this set of players and set of actions okay player one is husband say player one wife player two okay both are either they can go go to watch a football match or if also has got two actions either to watch a football match or a movie okay so we can see that if husband is choosing football and wife is also choosing football then husband is getting two wife is getting one so the idea is husband is watching his favorite thing a football match and also he is together with his wife so he is getting two in case of wife although she is with her husband so he is she is driving some utility out of it but she doesn't like to watch football match that's why that's how she is getting one okay <clears throat> now if we talk about the other option movie movie so here husband is together husband and wife are together wife is are together so husband is getting one because he is not watching football he is watching movie but wife is getting two because she is watching watching movie as well as she is with husband also okay suppose they go for this husband goes for movie and wife goes for football then they are getting 0 0 because they are not together similarly is the case with football movie okay so this is how we define this other situations other than prisoner's dilemma okay i hope it is clear other game is this is everybody every one of us know this matching pennies okay so here what is happening two people choose simultaneously whether to show the head or tail of a coin okay if they show the same sides person 2 pays person 1 a rupee okay this is how the rules of the game are if they show up different sides then person 1 pays person 2 a rupee so depending upon who is paying a rupee to whom i have written these numbers plus 1 or minus 1 okay so this is how we can draw a game matrix for this kind of situation so there are two players p1 and p2 okay each of them has got two 
options two actions either head either they will show up head or tail similarly player two player two also show up head or tail and depending upon who pays whom one rupee we can come up with this kind of game matrix okay so this is how we have seen some example uh, to uh, to formulate these games okay i hope it is clear so having done this now we will move towards solving uh, or coming up with the solution of these games okay so for that i am defining something called dominant and dominated strategies or actions as i told you that we will use strategies and actions as uh, as interchangeable things okay so we will now see what are dominant strategies and dominated strategies for that i am taking this example of prisoners dilemma only okay so clearly there were two prisoners on or uh, two players player 1 and player 2 each of them got two options defect or cooperate okay fine <coughs> so see to move further what we will assume so we will assume that player 2 is playing defect so we are in this column okay so here player 2 is playing defect okay so what the player 1 has options now so player can player 1 can play defect or cooperate okay so we can see here if player 1 chooses defect this then what is the payoff of player 1 so green color represents the payoff of player 1 the first number in the uh, two 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 vector this thing okay the ordered pair we are first number two number vector we are first number represents the payoff of player 1 and second number represents the payoff of player 2 okay so given that the player 2 is playing defect player 1 can choose defect which is giving him payoff of 3 see here 3 okay and player if player 1 chooses cooperate then cooperate is giving him payoff of 1 okay and we can compare 3 is more than 1 what does it mean it means that player 1 is better off by choosing defect okay over cooperate given that player 2 is choosing defect okay so as 3 is more than 1 so this defect is better than cooperate okay similarly we can see what if player 2 chooses cooperate we are here now now if player 1 chooses defect it is he is getting 8 if he chooses cooperate he is getting 5 again 8 is greater than 5 what does that mean that means again defect is better compared to cooperate okay so what we can conclude with these example we can conclude that opt player one's optimal choice is defect regardless of what player two to chooses okay we saw in both the cases player two was choosing defect then also player one is better off by choosing defect okay similarly <coughs> when player two chooses cooperate then also player one is better off by choosing defect so irrespective of what player two is doing okay either he chooses defect or he chooses cooperate player one's optimal choice is defect okay why because with defect he is getting higher payoff 3 here 8 here compared to 1 here when he chooses cooperate 5 here when he chooses cooperate here so in both the cases he is getting higher payoff in case of defect so defect is better than cooperate defect is better than cooperate in both the situations so in such scenario we call this as dominant strategy so here defect is defect is dominant strategy for player 1 dominant strategy for player 1 what does it mean so basically as i told you if he is choosing defect then he is getting 3 here 8 here compared to cooperate if he, he has chosen cooperate he would have got 1 here and 5 here so 3 is more than 1 8 is more than 5 so irrespective of what player 2 is doing it does not matter what player 2 does player 1 is always choosing or it is 
beneficial for player 1 to choose defect always no matter what player 2 is doing. So, that is why in such kind of situation I will say that defect is dominant strategy for player 1. Why? Because defect is giving higher payoff to player 1 irrespective of the choice of player 2. Okay? So, this is how we define dominant strategies. Okay? So, dominant strategy of a player is the strategy that is strictly better than any other strategy regardless of the other players strategy choices. Okay? So, this is how we define dominant strategy. In our example, what was happening? Defect is strategy in prisoner's dilemma, dominant strategy over Okay. So, we can say cooperate is strategy by defect. How we define dominant strategy and dominated strategy. I hope it is clear.